So this is a video on how to learn to crochet when making a pea, sweet corn or baked bean. So I'll go through all the basics of this style of crochet to help you when you're making your Ed's Food Fund or Alex's Garden vegetables. So what you're going to need is a three millimetre hook um, to start off with. You're going to need your ball of yarn that you'll have got in your kit. And what I would advise if you are a beginner is start with the lightest colour because it will be a little bit easier to see your stitches. So if you are making the peas, start with your lime colour because you'll have lime and green in your can. If you're starting with corn, start with your primrose. And if you're starting with the beans, start on your oatmeal. And what we're going to do to begin with is tie a slip knot. So let me just clear that out of the way. We're going to tie a slip knot, and the easiest way of doing that is to create a loop like that. You put your thumb and your finger in through that loop and get the tail end of the yarn and then bring that through, but not all the way through to the point at which you've got a loop that can loosen and tighten like that. Pop that onto your crochet hook, and then what we're going to do is chain two stitches. Now let's talk a little bit about how to hold your hook and how to hold your yarn. So I am a right-handed crocheter and that means I'm going to hold my hook in my right hand and I hold mine in an overhand position like this because I find that gives me lots of control when being able to turn the end of the hook by 180 degrees like that. Um, there is an alternative hold which is underneath like this. There's no right or wrong. It really is down to what you find most comfortable um, when working that hook. So if you're totally new to crochet, I would say mirror mine to begin with, but if you're finding it a little bit uncomfortable, then maybe try the alternative hold to work out what's best for you. And then in terms of holding your yarn, I'm going to hold that in my left hand and I have a very simple hold where I'm just going to grab the yarn through my index finger like that. Keep that in a tucked up position while I'm crocheting and that's it. Now you can wrap it, every crocheter does this slightly differently, you can wrap it around your hand. It doesn't really matter, just once again, um, make sure that it is comfortable for you and if you're finding it uncomfortable, try some alternatives as we go along. So to do a chain stitch, what you do is you take your hook and you grab the yarn, turn that hook downwards towards yourself and then bring it through the loop that is on the hook like that. That is a chain. So we're going to do two of those and then we're going to do the only stitch that we need to learn to be able to make any of the of these patterns, the pea, the sweet corn or the bean. And that is a British double crochet or a DC. And that is called a single crochet in US terms. So the first thing to look out for there is these are British terms. It's a double crochet that we're going to do. So what you do is you take your hook, you put it in through that first chain hole like that. Yarn over in exactly the same way we were doing for the chain and bring that back through to the point where you've got two loops on your hook like that. Then you yarn over again, turn that hook downwards because that'll mean that you can bring it back through nice and smoothly. That is a DC or a double crochet stitch, the only stitch we need to make these patterns. So we're going to go and work five more of those into that same hole because the first bit of instruction is begin by DC6 into a ring. So you go in again, yarn over and bring it back through to the point where you've got two loops on your hook. Yarn over and through two loops, so that's two. And once you've worked that sixth one, all you need to then do is pull the tail end tight like that so that it's closed up into a neat circle. So once you've got your six stitches in a circle, we're going to move straight on to round one of the pattern. And what that says is to double crochet two into each of those stitches and then it'll have the number 12 in brackets. So we've got six at the moment and the stitches are the little V's that you can see around the outside there. What we need to do to get up to 12 is actually work two double crochets into each of those stitches and that will double the size of our circle. So when we're working a stitch, what we need to do from now on in is we'll actually always be putting our hook right beneath both sides of the V like that. We're never going to be going into the into the into just one side of it or into the same hole. We're working the stitches now, which means we put our hook in right beneath the whole stitch. So let's go in for the first one. So we go in beneath both sides of the V and then we're going to do a double crochet by yarn over and through 
yarn over and through the two loops. So exactly what you've been doing. But what's going to make this circle get bigger and, and help your pea grow is the fact that you're going to go back in to the stitch that you've just worked and do that a second time. So you've put two double crochets into the first one of your six. Then on to the next V along. So you see that that's that one there. You go in and that will be stitches three and four. So again, two of them into the same hole. Then on to the next one along, which will be five and six. Then on to the next one along will be seven and eight. Next one along again, nine and ten. And then on to the final one, 11 and 12. And as you just saw me do, then you can pull that tail to close up the circle at any point. So you've got a nice, nice, neat closed circle, which we began from. So the only thing you need to be able to do now is count how many stitches you've got so that you can check you have got 12 when you finish this first round of instruction. So you never count this live loop here. You're going to count round the edge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 clear Vs that you can see around the edge. That means you've got the right number of stitches. You've got 12. Now, what I would recommend um, as a stitch marker, just to keep track of where you are in your pattern, is once you've got to 12, you've counted them, you've verified you've got the right number, break off a, a contrasting piece of yarn to the one that you're using. Um, so obviously, in this case, I'm going to use the green because that's included in your kit. It could even be the yarn from the yarn label if you want it to be. Drop your hook into the last stitch you worked like that. So I've just dropped it back into the middle of the V and then just pull that bit of yarn through that stitch. And that means that you know you're never going to have to go back to the beginning again. There's no risk of dropping stitches or anything like that. You've got the right number. You've verified you've got 12. It's now onwards and um, only ever moving forwards. So the next round of instruction, we're going to go from 12 to 18. And what you'll be doing here is the instruction will say to double crochet one, which means do one double crochet into one stitch and then double crochet two into the next stitch. So I've done one into the second stitch and then I go back into that same hole and I do another one. So I've done one and then two into the next one. I've done one and then two into the next one. I've done one and then two into the next one one two into the next one and then the sixth repeat because you're going to repeat that six times as it says on the round of your instruction you do one and then two into the next one and when you get back round to your stitch marker like that if you are learning for the first time count them once again to check that you've got 18 around the edge and then just dip that hook down grab that yarn and pull it through and this is how your P grows. This is how this style of crochet grows, is you're always just working with your double crochet stitches and you're sometimes increasing. And what that is means putting two stitches into one stitch when it says that in your pattern. So the next line of instruction will take us to 24. And um, what you're going to do is double crochet two and then double crochet two into the next stitch. And that does not mean two into every stitch. It means do one into one, one into the second one, and then increase in that third one. So you're going to, when it says double crochet two, double crochet two into the next stitch, that means double crochet one, double crochet two, and then double crochet two into that third stitch. So you go all the way around like that, following your pattern. When you get to the point in your pattern where it says to just double crochet, so it'll just say DC on the end of the round, that's where you're just putting one into every stitch. So you just whiz round putting one into every stitch and that's when it becomes a 3D cup. So the final thing that you need to learn to do is to be able to decrease or do a double crochet two together. And I'm just going to swap to the bean for this one because the bean has some really interesting decreasing in it. That's how you create this shape here. So that classic um, bean shape is created by putting your decreases in a specific place. So once you've learned to increase, the only other thing you need to learn is to be able to decrease. So I've got the bean there and what I'm going to do is the double crochet two together. And that's how we're creating a shape like this. It's also how you'll decrease to do the top of your P. So what you do 
is we'll just recap the normal stitch first and then I'll do a double crochet two together. So the normal double crochet that you've been doing throughout, you go in beneath both sides of the V of the stitch like that. You yarn over to the point where you've got your two loops and then you yarn over and come through those two loops. So that's a double crochet. To do the double crochet two together, we're actually going to come up the middle of the next V. So you put your hook right up through the center of that next V along like that. Then in the same way, you take your hook back down and you do the same thing on the next stitch. So you've got two halves of the next two stitches on your hook and then you double crochet through those two halves. So you yarn over through those two, yarn over, and through the two that are on your hook. So let's do that again. I'm going to do a normal one in between so you can see the difference. So there's a normal double crochet where I'm putting my hook right beneath both sides of the V. Then a DC two tog or a double crochet two together. You come up through the center of the next stitch like that, down and up through the center of the following one. So you've got two halves on your hook. Then you yarn over and double crochet through those two halves. And that is all you need to then um, create these lovely shapes. Obviously it's used for the center of the bean, but it is exactly what you'd be doing as you decrease back down to close up the P when you've finished. So the only other thing to really talk about before we get on to sewing up and sewing their eyes on is to do with right side and wrong side. So the inside or the outside of what you're making. Now, when you're crocheting, um, what you need to really be sure you're not doing is making your life harder by crocheting onto the inside of the circle that when you're doing a 3D shape like this. Whenever you are crocheting this style of crochet, whether you're right-handed or you're left-handed, you should always make sure that the next stitch that you're working, so in this case, as a right-handed crochet, it will always be next along in that direction. As a left-handed crochet, it will be on the other side. You need to make sure that that's always closest to your body, that there's no crochet in the way in between that stitch and you. If you find that when you're holding your, your peas and your beans, you're, you're going into the inside of a circle like that and you see you've got the rest of these stitches um, closest to your body, then that means it's going to be inside out. Now to spot it, if you can't spot it from the way that you're holding it, on the outside of your um, what you're making on the right side, the correct side that will be on the outside, you should be able to see the horizontal rounds that you've crocheted. Whereas on the wrong side, you'll see vertical lines like this. And the other way to spot it is that decrease that we've just done, that DC2 tog is invisible on the right side of what you're making, but it is very much visible on the wrong side of what you're making. If you find that you're halfway through like this, and yours is on the outside and you've concluded, yes, my tail is on the outside, it must be inside out. All you need to do, you don't need to start again, just do exactly what I'm doing here, is flip it back round like that and then make sure that in the future, whenever you're crocheting, the stitch that you're working is always closest to your body with no crochet in between. So that's everything you would need to make your bean or your pea. But the sweet corn has an alternative start, which gives you a straight line, which is how we can create that classic sweet corn shape is we're going to actually start from a chain and then crochet around that chain. So when you're doing that, what you need to do, start with a slip knot in exactly the same way as we did before. Like that. But this time we're going to chain six stitches. So one two, three, four, five, and six. And what we're going to do is crochet back down that chain. So you turn and you crochet, double crochet into the middle of that chain. So into the middle of the V. One, two, three, four, and then into the last one, you're going to do an increase. So you're going to do two into that stitch like that. And then what you do is rotate that chain around and then we're going to crochet up the other side of it. So you're going to go in and do one, two, three, four, and then an increase into the end of it again. So like that, one and two. And what you've got is rather than a round circle that we begin with on the others is we're going to be starting from a long straight piece. Then you treat this in exactly the same way as you were doing when we were working in rounds before. So add in your stitch marker like that. 
that marks your round and then you just carry on working the stitches in exactly the same way on the other side. So when it comes to stuffing these shapes, I'm going to use a um, recycled polyester stuffing here, but you can use any stuffing that you want to. Um, you can get um, pure veg based ones like uh, we do a kapok and we do a cotton, or you can also use a pure wool as well. Put a little bit of stuffing in there like that. And you don't want to overstuff them so that they become stiff, but you obviously want to fill out that space so that you are seeing all that lovely shaping that you've been doing. If you're struggling to push the stuffing in through that hole, all you need to do is use the heel of your hook like that. And that's the brilliant thing about these soft grip hooks is the fact that um, they also are a brilliant tool for pushing the stuffing inside the shapes. Just manipulate it a little bit when you've got it in. And then the sweet corn, you'll push it in through the big hole like that. And we will then actually use our yarn to crochet those two pieces together at the end. But all you need to do to close up the other two is take a wool needle and you gather the stitches together so you weave in and out of that last round of stitches like that And then to fasten off the yarn, just come through and go around a stitch like that. And that will mean that it's really secure, ready for you to then just snip off that end at the surface of the fabric. So it's been done. I'll do exactly the same thing with the P. So push in any ends. Gather the stitches. And then secure off the end. So when it comes to the sweet corn, all that you're going to be doing slightly differently is you will need your ball of yarn. Now, if you haven't broken the yarn on both pieces, you could leave it attached on either. It doesn't matter which side you leave it attached on. Um, but what you need to do when you break your yarn is you just pull that through like that. Then what you want to do the sweet corn is line up the two lines. So you did actually do the same kind of start that I just showed you on both pieces, both the base and the top. Line up those lines so you've got a straight line on the top of the um, piece like that. Line up the line on the bottom piece in exactly the same way. And then all you need to do is put your hook in beneath both sides of the V on a stitch on the top and then do the same thing on the bottom like that. Use your ball of yarn or if you've still got it attached, all the better. You've got even less sewing up to do. And what you do is you double crochet through both pieces. So put your hook in through the whole stitch on the top piece and then through that whole stitch on the bottom piece and work a double crochet. So then through the whole one and through the whole one and a double crochet. And that's how you attach the two pieces together is just by double crocheting all the way around. Then your stitch count will match on both pieces so you can just line up one stitch into the other and finish the piece off. And what you can do with this one is just tuck in as many ends as possible. So when you get back round there, I tuck in as many ends as possible as you can. So that way you're only going to have the one thread that we're going to break at the end to actually sew in with your wool needle. So tuck all of those in. I've left them very long. They could have been shorter when you finished your piece. Tuck them in. Come right the way around and then you can break your yarn and just sew that one end in. So with all the crocheting done, it's time to sew on the eyes. That's the, the thing that will really bring these to life and bring a smile to somebody else's face. And to do your eyes, I've used a cream and a black thread, which you'll find inside your kit. And all I do, there's no right or wrong in terms of this. It really is what's going to make you laugh, is bring your cream yarn through like that and then around about three stitches so do you see how you've got your rounds one two three like that you want to make them about three rounds big is what i find looks best 
So come across like that. And I'm coming through the same stitch hole at the top, but one across at the bottom. So it's like a very small triangle that I've made like that. Then in and through, use your lines as a grid so that you're getting them on the same line of the P. One stitch across. Like that. So that's your cream outlines to your eyes done. And then to finish it off, just a little black set of black pupils and a little smile. So bring that through to the point where you're in the centre. And then do a little mouse with a triangle like that. And that is your character brought to life with a few lines of thread. Now, do spread the word about Ed's Food Fund and about how easy it is to make these peas, sweet corn and beans. And make sure you share your photos using the hashtag Ed's Food Fund or Alex's Garden.